The company itself, we're a publicly listed company on the NASDAQ. We have a market cap of uh, close to $250 million today. Uh, we're also very well capitalized. So we have over $50 million in cash, uh, which represents about four years of our current burn rate. So uh, plenty of capital at this point in a very uncertain time, certainly. Um, and the, the company itself is, uh, has, has really transitioned a few different times over the past couple of years, uh, part of which was driven by our, our collaboration with CLS. So the, the company, uh, our primary platform is something called the ClearPoint Neuro Navigation System. And what's unique about this system is that the surgeries themselves do not take place in the operating room. Instead, we've taken all of the equipment you would see in a typical operating room and we've made them compatible with an MRI scanner. So it allows a surgeon to do an entire procedure inside of an MRI magnet because our system is made of plastics, uh, ceramic, glass, uh, a few other materials that are MRI compatible. And that's very, very valuable because it allows a surgeon to actually see live what they're doing inside of the body instead of having to link an old MRI image to a live CT image and then do those, uh, overlap those two and hope that the, nothing is moved. Um, and why that's ex extremely valuable for CLS in particular in, in laser ablation for these neuro procedures um, is that you cannot turn the laser on in a neuro procedure unless that patient is inside of an MRI magnet. So if you're using a competitive platform to ClearPoint, you would actually have to move the patient out of the operating room and into the MRI before you would turn the laser on versus our collaboration, you can do the entire procedure start to finish inside the magnet. So that makes it a, a pretty unique offering that we have. Uh, some of the other tools that we have here at ClearPoint is we also provide navigation for deep brain stimulation. We provide navigation for biopsies, which are used in, in tumor procedures, obviously. Uh, and we also provide a navigation system that uh, helps pharmaceutical companies take gene therapy and stem cells to a direct target in the brain. We are actively working with more, more than 40 different uh, active pharma partners today. So uh, a very, very diverse uh, uh, group of patients that we're trying to treat. Uh, and it's a, a you know, very well-tested program at this point. We're, we're FDA cleared, we're CE marked. Uh, we're installed at almost 65 hospitals around the world at this point. And uh, those are gonna be the very first hospitals we look forward to bringing the CLS platform to. Yeah, I mean, every time you look for a collaboration or a partnership, you wanna make sure you're solving a problem. So uh, the problem that we're trying to solve is that the laser ablation market for neuro uh, has been really, really slow going for the past 10 years or so. So uh, a lot of very, very good results are achieved primarily in epilepsy procedures, as well as in tumor or brain tumor procedures. Um, however, there's no one company or no one partnership that can actually do the entire procedure from start to finish. So at some point during the procedure, responsibility is being handed off from the navigation team over to the laser ablation therapy team. And you know, that transition doesn't always go smoothly. So uh, us being able to build this collaboration that has one team that is responsible for the entire procedure and can actually build both product lines to be perfectly compatible with each other so that the, the entire procedure experience is streamlined, it's fast, it's efficient, it's as simple as it possibly can, which is really crucial for these procedures. If, uh, if laser ablation is really gonna take off in the neuro space, uh, we need to make it like a manufacturing line, right? You want every single procedure done the exact same way over and over again, and have these centers of excellence doing tons of procedures every year and getting better and better and better with each one. And if we can actually take all of these disparate types of procedures today and turn them into one coordinated effort over and over again, we think that's gonna be you know, by far the best solution for our patients. I mean, the way I always think of it is there's, you know, how big is the market? So the number of patients that we can actually treat together and then how competitive is our product in that space to guarantee that we can, uh, we can win as much market share as possible. So on the patient population side, the two primary places where these procedures are done today uh, is number one in something called refractory epilepsy or drug resistant epilepsy. Uh, there's about 13,000 patients every single year in the United States alone that are diagnosed with this, this disorder. And, and really what that means is, um, you know, a, a neurosurgery is never the first option for a patient. So the first thing you do is you try a number of different epilepsy drugs to try to control the seizures. And it's very common that a patient will try, you know, three or four years worth of studies and up to six different drugs 
before a neurologist would say, you know, no matter what drugs we give you, uh, you're probably not going to respond or the side effect of the drug is worse than the seizures. So the patient doesn't want to do it. At that point, that patient is generally referred to a neurosurgeon to look at some of those different options. Um, so again, that's a, a significant opportunity. Uh, I think it's, a, like I said, 11 to 13,000 patients in the U.S. alone. Uh, if you take that worldwide, uh, it's at least two or three times that, right? So, so that's one, one opportunity of very sick patients that we can restore quality of life if we can target and ablate the region of the brain where the seizures are starting and do it efficiently and consistently. So that's, our, that's kind of our first opportunity. Uh, the second opportunity where laser ablation is used today is in oncology for brain tumors. And uh, again, about the market size is about the same size of operable tumors that are small enough that you could actually use a laser ablation uh, procedure to ablate that tumor. So you catch it early enough before it's grown so large that you actually have to do an open resection to carve the tumor out. In our instance, we're actually doing all of the entire procedure through a four millimeter burr hole. So a tiny, tiny little minimally invasive procedure, which is obviously something that a, a patient pr would prefer versus having a craniotomy done on one side of their head. Uh, so again, that's another 12 to 13,000 patients a year uh, that we could potentially be helping to treat. Uh, and again, worldwide, you know, three to four times that number. So uh, the, the, the overall pers uh, number of patients that would benefit from this type of technology is pretty significant. Uh, the biggest part of capturing all of those patients is again, giving them confidence that, that neurosurgery is a great option, uh, diagnosing the patient soon enough while the tumor is small. And again, doing something in such a small, minimally invasive hole that the patient doesn't even have to shave their head. They can actually just move on with their life and, and hopefully recover quickly. So, so that's sort of the market potential that we're going after initially. Um, and you know, I would say if you, were to, if you were to capture all of those patients that I'm talking about there, you know, that's probably a world, worldwide market of somewhere between 150 and $200 million for the laser catheters themselves. So uh, a significant opportunity on the neuro side. The other part of the question, not just capturing the patients, but again, making sure that we have the most competitive product possible is again, solving some of those problems that I listed before uh, that, a, that a hospital would have. So if we can streamline that procedure, if we can make every surgery predictably in the three to four hours range, instead of having some that go a lot longer, uh, it allows the hospital to do two or three procedures a day inside of the same MRI magnet which is a significant barrier to, to making sure you have access to the MRI. Uh, these are all the things that we wanna make sure we do. And, and again, having our experience, given we're already in the room, we already know the neurosurgeons, we're already scrubbing in on these procedures, being able to partner with a technical expert like CLS and provide a solution together that our, our current sales channel can immediately deploy to the surgeons we're already working with. You know, We think we could actually go pretty quickly once, once we do get that FDA clearance. I expect to be working very, very closely with CLS. You know, um, one of the big mistakes you can make in, in medical devices in general is to not continue to innovate and get a little too comfortable. Uh, and again, being able to take their technical expertise, uh, some of the software expertise from the, uh, the company IGT in Bordeaux, France, who's partnered with CLS as well, having our team that's physically watching the procedures and making sure they all go perfectly well, and then also making sure all of the products work in unison together under one, uh, one workflow. Uh, the first generation is going to be followed by the second, the third, the fourth, and fifth. We want to be viewed as an innovative company, and I think we are here at ClearPoint, uh, and I think CLS would like to share that, that innovative view as well. So I would expect uh, you know, new products pretty much each and every year and, and build a cadence to prove to the market that, yes, this is an innovative partnership that you know, neurosurgeons are not really used to today.